In this video, I am going to explain what STRIDE is about, what each letter in the acronym stands for and also I will give some examples, real world applications and examples around it. STRIDE is a security concept, threat modeling concept and is an acronym for spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service and elevation of privileges. Think about when you construct a house, you think about security of the house, right? You look at building a fence or a compound around the house, you may want to have a strong door in the front for access to people. You will have to have locks and maybe fingerprint sensors, many other things. You may want to make sure your back doors and windows and everything else is secure. You put the right kind of latches. You may want to have stored some sensitive information like your papers and documents, which can be in a locker in your bedroom. There could be a vault in the house where you have very extremely sensitive information can be stored. So all this is what we think about when you build a house. Similarly, when you build a software application, you will need to think about the security of the application itself. You need to make sure how, who all can access your system, what all they can see in the system, how much access they can gain, can they hack into something, can they use some vulnerabilities and force themselves into it, access sensitive information and plainly see every other information about other users, privacy, a lot of things are there. All these things have to be thought about when you are building a software application. So the letter S in Stripe stands for spoofing. Spoofing is a type of an attack where a user tries to gain access to privileged or unauthorized information of another user by pretending to be that user. Imagine in real world or like when you watch some movies in Hollywood, Bollywood, in the old movies you must have remembered a scene where a detective overhears a smuggler's gang talking about uh, taking some diamonds at the docks. So they would have given some information like wear a black coat and a black hat and a white handkerchief, hold a briefcase and all. So the detective intercepts this, now dresses up as this person, impersonates, goes to the dock, waits there and tries to collect the diamonds. You, you must have uh, seen this scene in some of the movies or something. This is impersonation or the detective just spoofed uh, to be the smuggler and that is an example you can think of to relate to. In software applications, spoofing is a very common threat. It happens a lot. People try to spoof using different types of spoofing. That is, there is IP spoofing, there is DNS spoofing, there is email spoofing. You must have remembered seeing some emails sometimes from one of the banks that you bank with. For example, Citibank or ICICI Bank, RBC or something where it says that uh, please log into your system, change your password or something like that, right? So when you click on that link, a website opens which looks exactly like the website that you bank with with the logo, the banner, the colors and everything else and you ac actually fill in your username and password but if you check the URL carefully you will see that that is not the URL of your actual bank. It will be some IP address or some other uh, URL and that can be a dangerous threat. The attacker can gain access to your username and password for your bank and you know what can happen. So the next letter T in stride stands for tampering. Tampering or changing data is another type of an attack where a user does a man in the middle attack or when the request is sent from point A to point B, the attacker can catch the data in the middle, in the over the wire and change the data for personal gain. So this is tampering attack. So uh, to understand what is uh, an example of a tampering, there is a famous movie in Bollywood called as Three Idiots played by Amir Khan wherein one of the students is trying to give a speech on the stadium in front of a lot of people. Amir Khan tampers the speech by changing one of the words from Chamatkari to Balatkari and it becomes a hilarious uh, thing but also the student is about to get expelled and everybody gets really mad about it. So this is 
uh, example of tampering, right? You take the original data, tamper with it, change the data, and it can mean something else. So that you can relate to in a real world example as tampering. In software applications, tampering can also be brutal. Uh, think about you shopping using Amazon or Flipkart or one of those uh, e-commerce applications. You have purchased a pen drive or a thumb drive for example for like worth $5, $10, placed an order. Somebody does a man in the middle attack, catches your request midway, changes only the product name, product to an iPhone or a MacBook Air or something and then changes the address to his or her delivery address but leaving the credit card details and the cookie session details intact. Now what happens is because of the data tampering, some attacker got an iPhone for free from your money. The next letter R stands for repudiation. Sometimes it's also called as non-repudiation. So it is a situation where there is no evidence that an action has happened or the user can deny a claim that I have not done it. So this can happen quite a bit, especially in terms of uh, hacking some websites and all that stuff. In real world, repudiation can be thought of as somebody said that, hey, I had come to your house, I had dropped the package. I don't know where it is now. Uh, it's your fault. You are not there. Right? But having a lack of a CCTV camera or a register or a security guard or somebody at home, you are not able to prove whether this person had actually come or not. Right? Think about that. That can be a closest example. In software applications, repudiation can uh, be thought of where uh, people have hacked websites of government websites, Microsoft.com website had been hacked, some of the big uh, important websites are hacked by some people and they even in uh, the dark webs and all they claim that hey we have done it but there is no evidence for us to prove it because maybe we are not logging the IP of the IP address of the person who is trying to hack into the system or the MAC address or the time zone, timestamp, origin and many things. So doing a proper security audit can actually prevent these kind of uh, uh, attacks, but uh, repudiation in software applications is all about storing and collecting the required audit data for security. The next letter I stands for information disclosure. So this is about sharing too much information than it is required or showing private confidential data that is not to be shown to an unauthorized user. Come to think of a real world example, think about a doctor's office or a hospital or a medical place where uh, you have your tests done and waiting for the results and the doctor or a paramedic comes in and announces in front of everybody that hey you have lung cancer or a prostate cancer when you're sitting with your family and friends that would be unwanted information or unauthorized information that should not have been disclosed to uh, people that are not supposed to have heard it. Information disclosure in software applications is commonly caused because of some developers trying to give too much information, trying to be very meticulous in writing the error messages and quotes. What if there is an error and an information that is displayed on the screen shows the social security number of a person or credit card details of a person or even bad is showing the database schema, table name, column name which can cause more attacks. A hacker can easily use this information and do different types of attacks. The letter D stands for denial of service. Probably everybody knows this. Denial of service stands for blocking access to resources that legitimate users should have had access to.
to think of a real world example of denial of service uh, imagine some rich person blocking the road for some process or a festival or a function or a marriage function at his house uh, people who are using the lane or the street will be blocked access to even in a bank if somebody tries to block the queue by taking too much time or uh, you know wantingly trying to block access to other people Denial of service in software applications, uh, you can think of a situation or an example where uh, one of the website uh, is doing very well and a competitor whose website is not doing very well can start attacking or can start sending millions of requests to this web application, uh, thereby bringing down that application and uh, the services are disrupted for all the legitimate users of the actual website and the competitor will gain advantage because of this but this is very bad and uh, this needs to be prevented and with a good security design the last letter e in stride stands for elevation of privileges elevation of privileges is a situation or a type of an attack where a user with a lower level account access will gain administrative or higher level secure access to the system by using some tricks or by some kind of a hacking or uh, taking advantage of a vulnerability in the system and this can be disastrous. In real world, elevation of privileges can be thought of as a situation where somebody has gone to a movie, has bought a normal ticket or a show or some kind of a, uh, you know event happening, has bought a normal ticket and then slide slowly sneaking into the premium or uh, luxury access by using some back door or some uh, you know other entry that they can jump off into the fence and get into that. So in software applications you can think of a situation where a normal employee of a company can gain access as an admin or uh, going into a higher level access so that the hacker can get access to the bonus information or payroll information or uh, some restricted uh, projects and other uh, pricing information which ideally the employee should not have seen. So this can be done by changing some URL parameters or putting some extra text into a box or an input uh, box that was not supposed to be allowed and gaining access to it. Now this can be again a very bad situation for the company. It can be a loss in millions. In conclusion, we just talked about STRIDE. STRIDE stands for spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service and elevation of privileges. When you are building software applications, especially from a security perspective, you need to keep in mind all these aspects about STRIDE and make sure the system is secure from all sorts of threats and this can be a good guidelines for cyber security. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Praveen Kumar and I am an information technology specialist with 23 years of experience. I've worked as an ethical hacker, worked on security of applications and I'm currently one of the co-founders of Summit Info Labs. Thank you for watching this video.